What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. <clears throat> we are going to get into Love is <coughs> <coughs> Scratch that from the record. <laughs> I'm better now. Love is Blind, Season 6, Episode 9. All right? If you're brand new to the channel, I break down TV shows. One recap at a time, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, whether you're new or a returning viewer that is not yet subscribed, y'all go ahead, hit that subscribe button for me. We got to get to 22,000 subscribers. So, at this point, if you have not subscribed, hit that button for me. Thumbs up the video. Leave your comments down below. Spoiler-free comments. I know that the that spoilers are floating all over for, like, the end of the show, who actually gets married and stuff. Don't put that, don't put that in the comments, y'all. Just comment on episode 9, all right? Let's talk about this. Elephant in the room is my voice, okay? My ear is still messed up. My voice is still messed up for the most part, but we are going to get through this. So this episode starts off with Jimmy and Chelsea. Big goofy, okay? So Netflix has this dramatic AF song that is playing, but let's, let's, let's do it. Um... Called feet don't touch the floor. It's very symbolic, I guess, of how Chelsea is feeling. So <clears throat> she tells him, tells Jimmy that leaving the way that he did wasn't cool. Okay, she didn't know where he was. He was like, to be fair, I mean, you said you were leaving too. Yeah, but Big Goofy just went outside. You actually packed your spinning night bag and you left the house. Okay. Whole different ball game. So she brings up that, or excuse me, he brings up that he was annoyed that she kept asking him over and over and over what was wrong. He was annoyed that she kept saying over and over and over that he didn't kiss her when he said that he did. He was annoyed at everything about Chelsea because let's be real, Big Goofy is annoying. She is. Chelsea, Chelsea seems like just a very annoying person. Some people just are. They can't help it. She tells him that I get that. I understand because I, too, get annoyed when people repeat themselves. So why did you do it to him? She then goes on to say that he needs to work on his delivery. He acknowledges that. He receives it. He understands it. He accepts it. He said that if she, you, Chelsea, need to work on your emotions and being overly sensitive. Let's be real, y'all. Chelsea is being overly sensitive in a lot of the stuff, right? You being over Now, should he have called her clingy? Probably not. Probably not. Right? That wasn't the best use of, of, of verbiage, okay? But at the same time, Chelsea, you are being overly sensitive about everything with this man. You made the decision, okay? You made the decision to be with this man that was not sure about you. You chose to be with a man that is not sure about you, sis. So at the end of the day, you either got to have the confidence to move forward or you got to learn to tuck your shame in, tuck your insecurities in. But you can't come at him because of the insecurities that you have when you know that you should have picked Trevor who was all in for you. But I digress. One thing that was very distracting for me this entire scene was seeing them toes wiggle in the forefront of the camera like this. He was moving them toes just, and I was like, keep your feet still. Go put on a sock. I cannot stand feet. I can't stand feet. But for them to be in the forefront of the camera and he's just crunching them. What are you doing? That bothered me so much. I was more upset with the cameraman for even doing that. You saw his toes in the camera like this. Lift your camera higher. Go up a frame. So, nonetheless, uh, Jimmy said that they both said things that hurt each other, which is true. He tells her that he wants to be there for her. He plans to be with her forever. Uh, he then said that he loves her so much more now that he has met her friends. That's such a weird thing to say. 
But okay, if that's how you feel, Jimmy. She said that she thought that he went to the bar. He said, it's a Tuesday and I'm grown AF. I got work in the morning. Ain't nobody going to the bar. <laughs> Ain't nobody going. <coughs> Ain't nobody going to the bar. So she points or he points out that she said that she was never going to <coughs> initiate sex again. And he's like, I need you to never do that. I like the sex. I just meant to say that you wanted the sex, not that I wanted the sex. Jimmy said, you ain't going to block my blessings. Not today, Satan. Okay. So we then get over to Jeremy and Laura. Remember how I told you I didn't like them individually or as a couple? I still don't. So she's arranging some flowers, okay, in a, in, a, in a vase, and there's no water in it. And that was one of the first things that I noticed. And I was thinking, okay, so, like, you trying to make potpourri? Like, why isn't there water in this vase? So it almost knocks over. He tells her, hey, hey, stupid, put some water in. Her response is, who has the degree here? If it is one thing that I do not like that people do is point out that they have a degree to others that don't. Putting water in a vase. If you're the one with the degree, why didn't your degree have an ass? Your summa cum laude have an ass? Your magna cum laude have an ass? Put water in the vase. They didn't teach you that in college? Okay. I just, I didn't understand that. That made absolutely no sense for her to say. C's get degrees, girl. So, I mean, were, were you a seer? I just, I don't understand that. I thought that was so incredibly rude. And then she's like, I'm just joking, just kidding. Come for me, I'm going to come for you. See, I feel like that is Laura's problem. It's raining, y'all, if y'all hear this. Um, Laura is a person that I feel like she's very nice and nasty. She's very nice, nasty. I have a degree. I have never been in an argument with somebody and said, yeah, but I got a degree with your dumb ass, with your fool ass. Like, it's no point to do that. What What are you, I guess. So her parents are coming over along with her uh, brother and his wife. So Jeremy said that he doesn't get nervous. Okay, he said, I don't get nervous about stuff like that. It's going to be cool. Why are you nervous? She doesn't want um, her parents to be uncomfortable and then for him to make things worse by being more uncomfortable, by like feeding into that. So she said that her parents have a good marriage that works for them, but she doesn't want to be complacent like her mother is in that marriage. I said, girl, not you throwing your parents under the bus to to, to talk shit about their marriage, low-key. The audacity. People really come on these shows and, like, out their family business, and I just will never understand why. So, Laura's parents come with her brother and her sister-in-law. Her brother and her, her brother and Jeremy look like the same person. Just look like, her brother looks like Jeremy if he grew his hair out. So they're talking and the way that they were passing this dog back and forth over this charcuterie board stressed me out. Why y'all want dog hair everywhere? Why y'all want to be nasty with it? Why does the dog need to be in your arms while you're eating crackers and cheese and an assortment of dried fruits? Why? Put that little nigga on the ground. He will be okay. Give him a milk bone so y'all can have this adult conversation without us touching this dog, then reaching for a cracker, then picking up the dog again. Who y'all just want to be nasty on TV? I don't get it. So her mother asked Jeremy, we know why she did it. Why did you do this process? He said, well, I've had awful dating experiences, and how often do you get the opportunity to date a, a, a string of women that want the same thing that you want? That is one of the best examples that, or best reasons that I have heard for being on the show. Everybody else is like, well, I've had such bad luck dating that I just thought this show was the best idea, the show that has like a 17% marriage rate. 
right? The marriage rate isn't the greatest or is 17% married at first sight. The marriage rate on this show, I don't even think it's 50% though. So for you to say, I thought that this show would give me the best shot. No, but Jeremy's saying that the experience of finding all these women that are coming in with the same goal as you, we all are coming in because we want to get, you know, find our forever, our forever first date. Awesome. Okay. So Laura tells her family, we're in a love triangle. And I said, bitch, what girl, why would you even say that? But alrighty. So they go back and forth about who's going to tell the story. She brings up how Sarah and DM'd him and the way that her parents were looking. I said, are you trying to make your parents uncomfortable? Cause it's not Jeremy that's doing it. Girl, it's you. So Jeremy was like, no, go ahead and talk about it. I want to hear you tell the story. So she said that Jeremy, um, didn't even like, ignore the message or whatever he engaged by hurting the message jeremy then said are we going to talk about this right now yes because you sat there with your fool ass and you told her i want to hear you tell the story now her father did not look thrilled he didn't look entertained in the least okay so she's telling the story about how he thumbs up he thumbs up the 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 message and her sister-in-law was like, well, you could have thumbs it up. He was like, it's not that I hearted it. I double tapped it. That hurts it. So, but he also says, I went up and showed it to you right away. Laura then said, yeah, you did. I'm over it. No, you're not because you just brought it up. You're not over it, sis. What bothers me about Laura is she likes to act. She's the most bothered unbothered person I believe on this entire cast instead of you actually showing your emotion tell him I think is I think it's effed up that you let Sarah that you even entertained Sarah Ann I would have preferred for you not to say anything back to her I would have preferred <coughs> excuse me for you to just tell her I'm confident in who I picked I like who I picked and be done with it that's all he had to do, but Jeremy, Jeremy don't like your ass, mainly because you probably told him to go bean dip this other woman and assault her. That's probably the real on why he like ain't really fooling with you like that for real, for real no more. So Laura is outside talking to her sister-in-law and, or she's before that, she's telling her, her parents, cause they're like, how did you decide on Jeremy? Versus anybody else. She said, oh, well, I told him to list all, you know, I started listing all these things that I thought were X and he liked them. But then I was like, this is childish. So I did a pro and a cons list. I said, girl, bye. So her X are like Hawaiian shirts and motorcycles. I guess I don't quite understand how liking, how somebody liking motorcycles is an ick. Now the Hawaiian shirt thing. I kind of feel like if it's just something that he want to do every now and again, girl, it ain't really bothering you. So, but Lori seems like the type of person that wants to dress you up and mold you into how she thinks that you should look, behave, and dress. So she's outside talking to her mother and her, um, talking to her mother and her sister-in-law. And she's saying how she does not like the Hawaiian shirt thing because he's educated and he's mature. And it's something that he just does just to be funny. Here's the thing though, sis, you're saying that he has a good sense of style. Jeremy never looks a mess to me. Okay. So if Jeremy looks okay to you, why would it bother you? Why would it bother you? That if every now and again, when he may go out to like a barbecue or something, if he wants to wear a Hawaiian shirt, like the way that she's making it seem, <coughs> she's acting as if he wears a Hawaiian shirt like every day, like that's his judge or something. It was very weird how she is going on and on about this. And her sister-in-law was like, your brother likes Hawaiian shirts. Now that I know that he likes them, I'm going to make sure he got some in his closet. It's not the end of the world. 
Not the end of the world. But she thinks it's childish. I think you're childish, Laura. How about that? I think you're childish. We get a very pointless scene of Amy and Johnny out dancing. I don't even think they talked in the scene. But they were out dancing. We then get Clay and AD. So, we're going to meet Clay's mother and his sister. Clay's mother and sister walk in. Clay stands up, but he does not greet them. And when I mean greet, he doesn't hug them. My brother lives out of state the same way that Clay lives out of state from his mother. When we are in town, when my parents are in town, or if my brother and his wife are up here, if my mother comes in and my brother hasn't seen her in, in days or weeks or months, he is hugging my mom. His wife is hugging my mom to embrace her, to greet her. That is weird to me that Clay just like staring at his mother. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? half ass pulled out her chair, but you raised him, you know, Mama Clay, so... I mean, you know, so his mother seems very nice, though, <coughs> very nice, very precious. His sister was very was a little more assertive, like she had more of a um, a tougher exterior, but she was still very nice. Her hair was everything. That was a vibe there. I said, wow, her hair is so pretty. So we find out that A.D. is a realtor and she manages the VIP at a nightclub. So, A.D. said that she's cold, right? A.D. says she's cold. Clay is like, oh, you cold? Ooh. Yeah. And, like, it's like he almost wanted to put his jacket closer over him. Now, the more gentlemanly thing to do would be for Clay to take off his jacket, his sweater, give it to his fiance but his mother takes off her shawl and ad was like oh no 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 his mother's going through the change obviously and she's like i'm hot and cold so it's fine i just kind of feel like clay damn damn if if i have never been in a situation where i told a man oh my god i'm cold and he didn't give me his jacket or his overcoat or his blazer i have never been in that situation. But I mean, AD, what you are allowing him to do now is how he's going to treat you in the future if there is a future, right? So they then start talking about uh, Clay's work schedule. Clay asked what he, or his sister asked him what he had, what he had going on. So I don't know what Clay does. Does he, I know he's an entrepreneur, does he like own properties? Because he said that he had a rental he had to get ready. I'm assuming he probably owns properties that he rents out. That's what I took from it at least. So they ask AD about how she feels about Clay's schedule. And she says she's cool with it, right? It's not ideal, but she's okay with it. But she said that she also feels that Clay chooses comfort over being with her and he'll stay at his place instead of coming home some nights so clay said that you know if it's two days out the week that i choose to be con that i want for convenience for me for my business then i feel like that should be okay out of the seven days out of the week he said he had an early rental and his place was close to he say lake norman he said he had to go get the boat ready and get all this type of stuff ready. He then turns around and becomes very condescending and said, well, you know, she don't really know. She's just now getting into her schedule. I've been working, so I know how this goes on. She doesn't even know about that stuff yet because she's not really into her job yet. Once she starts working, you know, she won't be getting home till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, will it be an issue then? And AD is like, the issue is not about work. Clay is like, I'm getting frustrated because I feel like I'm doing what I need to do. She ain't even working yet. Now, he keeps saying this. AD reiterates, it's not about work. It's never been about work. I want you to work, nigga. I want you to do what you need to do. He then says, so what's the problem then? And it like everybody at that table caught that. His mother was like, oh, let me pick up my gold glass. And 
So then he immediately was like, sorry. I think Clay picked up a lot of habits that his father instilled in him. A lot of habits that he saw his father do. And I think the way that he talks to AD, the way that he probably talks to women is a habit, is a trait that he got from his father. Unfortunately, right? I want, I can't wait till we see his father. Y'all think his father's going to actually be on the show? I want to see this man that he has, you know, basically built up to be Pretty Ricky. You know what I'm saying? Or or uh, Pretty Tony. Funky Charlie. So, he um, asked her, so when we're gossiping and laughing, is that not bonding? Is that not enough? And AD said, no. No. So what I think needs to happen with the two of them is they have to learn each other's love languages. AD's love language is clearly quality time. I don't know what his is. And I just kind of feel like I, I, I hate whenever we watch an argument on TV where the reality show or scripted and scripted TV and it comes down to somebody saying, I'm doing this, that, and the other. Isn't that enough? If it was enough, that person wouldn't be complaining about it. So his mother said, what y'all need is grace, okay? There needs to be a balance. AD, you have to understand his work schedule, but there also still needs to be a balance. If somebody is important to you, you will make the time. I say that stands for everything, whether that comes from parent child relationship, sibling relationships, friendships, and relationships. If somebody is important to you, you are going to make the time to be with that person, to nurture that relationship. AD is not important to Clay. One of the things that we learned in the pies after watching this show for six seasons is that a lot of these people, married at first sight too, but these people get together and a lot of the men feel like, I got you already, I don't have to court you still. Clay doesn't feel like he needs to court her because he, in his mind, he courted her in the pods. So because in his mind he courted her in the pods, what do I need to court you for now? His mother also said that if love is there, you will make the time. So with the right person, marriage can be a beautiful thing. I've heard so many people say that marriage is hard and, and everything, but a lot of people say marriage just takes work like anything else in life. Anything else in life. It's, it, it, it might be difficult at times, but marriage is not going to be the hardest thing that you do. It shouldn't be. If it is, then you are not with the right person. So we then get over to Amy and Johnny. Oh, I'm sorry. We get over to Chelsea and Jimmy. So we're meeting his friends that he's known for two years. You didn't have no older friends that like really, really know you know you. We're meeting these people he's known for two years. Um, he was so red the whole conversation. I said, are you nervous, Jimmy, or are you blushing? Are you nervous about what they're going to say or what she's going to say? Or are you blushing? It was weird. So she tells them that she's been married before and Jimmy is the only person that gave her shit about it. And he said that he had a lot dumped on him that day. Is y'all think Jimmy is an empath? I wonder if Jimmy's an empath. That would explain a lot, but I wonder if he's an empath. So she said that she now feels that after her divorce, which was a long time ago, that she is ready to move forward and get married again is because she has matured and learned a lot about herself after being divorced. So she said that she built, she's built a business. She has her dream job. Um, and now she wants somebody that she can share her life with. And she said, that's where you come at home, boy. She said, Jimmy makes her feel heard and seen. Does he? Because you were just saying that Jimmy didn't kiss you. You have been saying that you don't know if Jimmy e even really likes you. Your actions have shown that you do not trust Jimmy when he says, I love you. When he says, I want to be with you for the rest of your life. But he makes you feel heard and seen. Uh, we find out Jimmy cried during sex. I said, all right, maybe it was good to him. I don't know. 
Um, his friends say that he is very dependent on whoever he's with. Jimmy, that's a character flaw. That's a character flaw. You shouldn't be dependent. But see, he told that to Jessica when he is in a situation where he doesn't know how to react or how to feel about something. When he's overwhelmed, he wants somebody that's going to hold his hand and guide him through the tunnel to see the light at the end. By God, take him to the promised land. And see, Jimmy, as an adult, you shouldn't be dependent on anybody else for your own emotional stability. We might want to get a therapist on the line. Like you, as, as an adult right now at 39 years old, I am not emotionally dependent on anybody. You shouldn't be in like, yeah, your partner, your, your, your spouse should be there for you, but you shouldn't be dependent on them. Chelsea decides to tell his friends that Jimmy says she was clingy. They were like, okay, Jimmy's really the clingy one. He, you know, Ignore his ass for four hours and then he'll be back. And then Chelsea talks about how she's okay with him having female friends. They like her. She likes them. Cool. All is good in the hood with them. Uh, we get over to Amy and Johnny. His siblings come over. They all got the same face. Every single one of them. Just different color hair. These are all the same people. But they, they all get along. It was good. Nothing major come out of that scene. Um, the fact that she knew that his almost first name is Stone. They decided that she was in the family. You're one of us now, sis. So now you're one of the one of the Johnnies. Because they, I mean, they all look alike. <coughs> is that your sister? You can't tell? Like, they all look alike. Okay. Let's get to, let's get to the good. Okay. Let's get to the good. Laura and Jeremy. Off rip, she tells him, take them sunglasses off, right? That's how I knew that Jeremy was going to be on book. Because you're approaching, you're sitting there with sunglasses on in the house. Why? Because you want to hide your eyes so she can't see the lies, okay? Laura comes in and immediately gets into detective mode. Where were you the night of January 25th at 1045 p.m.? She gets into it. Were you here? Were you there? Were you everywhere? Were you at Lost and Found? No, your ass went in Lost and Found. You was over here. Where were you? I was like, oh! Badgering the witness, badgering the witness. That's how he felt. Laura came with it, okay? I felt like I was watching like an old time, like Matlock. I feel like we was watching Matlock. We was watching Andy Griffin when it was black and white. She held back nothing. And even though I don't like Laura's ass, I was here for it because I don't like Jeremy's ass either. <coughs> so he's acting guilty for one. She tells him, you left out of here at 10.45 p.m. You were out until 5 a.m. Unacceptable. Completely unacceptable and disrespectful. He said, and you know, he's such an ass. Okay, fine. Yes, I see how that can be understood. I see how that can be misconstrued. No, talk. Where were you at 2 a.m.? What were you doing until 2? Between 2 and 5 when the bar closed, what were you doing? He said, okay, here's how it went. Plan to go to karaoke bar. Bar plans change. We're going to go to Lost and Found, okay? Halfway there, I say, oh, Sarah's going to be there. Whoa, I'm thinking automatically right away, I'm going to turn around. I said, nigga, tell the story like, why, like, why are you telling it like you're reciting a script that you memorized in your head? He's not even talking fluently. Right. So he said that he was going to turn around, but he didn't want to let Sarah dictate where he goes. He gets to the bar. Sarah comes up to him. Hey, Jeremy gives a hug and walks away. I say, well, what's up with that? I feel like we have an issue. So I don't want the issue to go any further. So we need to talk and get to the bottom of the issue. Y'all really don't, though. Y'all don't need to talk about this because 
Why do you care if this lady, who is not your fiance, who you did not pick, who gives a flying fuck if Sarah has an issue with you? You certainly shouldn't. You certainly shouldn't. He said that the two of them hung back and they talked about things. We talked about a lot of things. What is there to talk about? This is what I don't get about some of these love is blind people. Where is your shame? You didn't get picked. So for you to come and want to break up somebody else's engagement because he didn't pick you, Sarah Ann, I liked you, but I kind of feel like now you up here on my list, sis. Now you up here because by no means should you really, like, what is there to talk about? He didn't want you. He didn't want you. That's just what it is. So he claims that they talked until 5 a.m. Laura said this could have easily been avoided if you would have shut the shit down. You left that door cracked open. So what are we going to do about this? You left that open. And I mean, maybe you just don't know how to sever ties. Maybe that's what it is. Jeremy was like, look, I gave you the reassurance because I shared my location with you. Laura said, I don't want to be engaged to someone who has to share their location with me for reassurance. And when she said that the light bulb should have went off above Jeremy's head, right? That's a word. If I have to have your location to not make sure that, you know, you're safe in case of an emergency, but if I have to have your location so I can check it to make sure you are not out laying low and spreading it wide on me, what are we doing? I don't want to be engaged to somebody who I feel I have to have their um, location. Not that I just want it so that, you know, if you say that you're at, you, if I know that you typically on Tuesdays go down to Lost and Found to kick it with the boys and there's a fucking fire at Lost and Found, I can check your location and be like, oh, he's driving his ass home so he's safe. Amazing. She said, I was asleep anyways. You shared your location with me when I was asleep. Did you want me to stay up all night and track your car? He was like, well, no. He, she said the reassurance would have been you bringing that narrow ass home at a decent hour. That's the reassurance. She said, because now I got to go meet your mother. She's going to ask, why do you want to marry my wonderful son? I don't have nothing nice to say. I said, I know that's right, Laura. Get into it. Because seriously, though, then the audacity, the, the gall, the temerity for you to pull this the day before she's supposed to go meet your mama. What? So then he claimed that he was in Lost and Found's parking lot. He was like, so Lost and Found is here. And then I was like around the corner at the parking lot. She gets back in detective mode. No, no, you weren't there. You weren't there. Don't share your location if you don't want me to check it. You weren't even in South End. You had your ass north of Uptown that's where Sarah Ann lives. I said, woo. <coughs> so, what I think happened, what I think happened is I think that Jeremy got in Sarah Ann's car. I think Jeremy left his phone because he shared his location with her. But see, see this, um, this iPhone, this Apple watch I got on? Jeremy's has the red dot. Did y'all notice that? What that red dot means, because my last one was the red, had the red dot. What the red dot means is he has LTE on his Apple Watch. So what that means is, even when you are not with your phone, your watch is going to then pick up your location. So when you was out laying that pipe on Sarah Ann, Okay, because you slept with her. Let's be real. When you were out cheating on Laura with Sarah Ann, whether you were at Sarah Ann's just sitting up in her house or not, when you were doing that, your watch tracked it. So 
when Laura woke up at five o'clock cause she's an adult and she checked your location and she saw that your ass was way out where Sarah Ann lives, even though your last location said that you were down at lost and found, you got caught up in something. He has no answer to this. He's sitting there with the audacity to look irritated with the audacity to look mad that she's questioning him. You're the one that lied. You lied. So as she gets up and walks out, she said that she's done. She wants out. I don't even blame you. I don't even blame you. Because it's, it's like, at least have the, the, the damn respect to be like, yeah, I went to Sarah Ann's house and we talked. But for you to just completely lie about it, plus you stayed out till 5 a.m. with this heifer. Bye, Jeremy. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. I know it's late. Um, episodes 10 and 11 come out tomorrow. Those will be out tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try to get episode 10 out before I go to work. And then I'll do episode 11 when I get home. But let me know what you guys thought about this. Subscribe. Um, leave your thoughts down below. Thumbs up the video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.